any special encryption, clustering, other information should be fine. And submit and logging on to the application interface Siebel slash SMC application. Uh, providing the primordial user ID, you entered in the AI installer and the password. So this is a one-off user. First thing you're gonna set up is the connection to the gateway. So you have to provide the FQDN and HTTPS port number of the gateway application container. Once you've done this, you're prompted to set up the gateway security profile. So you can give it any name, but gateway is a good idea. And enter the data source. So that is a name for the data source and a type for the security adapter. So we're going to use database authentication here. Point to the database. It's an Oracle database on the local machine. Provide the service name for database and the table owner. And on the second page, select your new data source and provide a user as admin, for example, to test the connection. And once you successfully save that, get the message that you have to re-log in now using the proper as admin user account. So the one of user is not. Step three of the bootstrap process is to create the gateway service with the registry. As you know, is now no longer in CBNS. So we're going to provide the port which will be used to connect to the registry. You can keep the default if you haven't used it already, the 2320. You enter a username for the registry, the password. We use this app name all over the place here and save. So at this point, you're actually creating the Siebel Gateway name server service. Since we are on Windows, we should be able to uh, locate it actually. So in our notes, we enter the registry port in case we need them later. And you see an empty deployment. So there's nothing in the registry as of yet. And if you look into the services on Windows, we find the Siebel Gateway name server running. And it's set to automatic by default. And you can make out the port number you provided in the command line details for the gateway. Despite what it says here, it's no longer using CBNS.dot or whatever. It's a Zookeep, uh, Apache Zookeeper registry. So this service needs to be up and running to do the rest here. And it starts with creating profiles. So we have created the security profile already. So now the next one is create an enterprise profile. There is a default sample profile. You can clone, copy it literally and change the copy. That's a recommended way of doing things here. Much of what you enter here is very familiar to seasoned Siebel guys or gals because this is basically what we entered in the old configuration wizard. So now profiles are a way of storing template boilerplate information. So we create the enterprise profile here, provide a path to the future file system. Since this is a new installation, it will create the file system and provide a username and password for the authentication and very familiar you provide the primary database connectivity for the enterprise click next to go through these pages specify the authentication profile to use the primary language and the encryption for SysNapi Here, which also should be fine. Just without encryption, maybe. So submit this. The profile is now stored. You can retrieve and change it anytime. And now we can use it to deploy the enterprise. So you go to deployment, click plus enterprise. Specify the profile you want to use. 
select deploy and enter a name for the enterprise. And optionally change the default description. And then click submit. So now this would take a few moments. So you might want to hit the refresh button to see if it goes from deployment in progress to deploy it. And it should do so after a few moments, so that could be a few minutes even. So what it basically does, it writes the new enterprise into the registry, just as it had done in previous Siebel versions with uh, Siebel is stuck. So one more, a refresh, and it's there, it's deployed. So that is our enterprise. Now we can start with Siebel servers. Since now we have a proper enterprise to contain the Siebel servers, we clone the existing sample server profile, rename it, and specify the correct username and password. Make sure you overwrite this one. Same for the anonymous user. Guest CST is just fine, but the password is probably not fine. And choose component groups. And remember, this is something you do in all the Siebel versions as well when you specify a Siebel server. It's just a profile that stores this as a boilerplate. Choosing Siebel Web Tools as a new component group is a good idea, so you have access to Siebel Web Tools immediately. Don't overdo it. With component groups, you can add them later. And there's the connection broker port and the synchronization manager port as usual. We don't specify any special encryption, clustering, other information it should all be fine. And submit and save this new Siebel server profile and go to deployment and click plus to deploy. Siebel server. So the hostname HTTPS port, that's really the container name for the Siebel server machine. So in our case it's the same machine name. We make sure it's the HTTPS port of the application container on the server machine. To deploy immediately, so to speak, Siebel server name, description, and you can also choose languages to deploy. Of course, you must have the language pack installed first. And now, when you click Submit on that machine, where the Tomcat must be running, of course, it will generate the Siebel server service, and it will also launch the Siebel server. So this process is quite lengthy since we have observed in our experiments that it actually stops and restarts the server at least once. So you have to be patient here. And after a few minutes, you should have a Siebel server successfully deployed in your enterprise. Next step is to just go down the route here and generate the profile for an application interface, which replaces the Siebel web server extension and third-party web server. The whole combination is replaced by the application interface. So again, it's about cloning or copying an existing profile, which are seeded. So click the clone button here. Those profiles are quite big, so it takes a while to process them, obviously. And then you can give your copy a new name. So we create the demo AI profile here, and you start on the first page entering uh, information in authentication. So these are parameters you might be familiar with from eApps.cfg, a file which is no longer present in IP17. Uh, so these are basically the basic settings in eApps.cfg which are now stored in the profile on the registry. You also notice REST inbound um, information. 
So what is the default and an anonymous user for REST inbound? What authentication is to be used? Logging information for various um, end interfaces, just as user interface, REST interface. And we also specify the object manager for REST inbound calls. So in case EI's uh, EAI object manager is not there, just pick anyone and make sure you bring it up later and change it. Well, this happened quite often that EAI object manager doesn't come up, at least in this version that we installed, 17.0. And the response URL is what will be included in the JSON response files as links to point to records. So if you're familiar with the REST API, the JSON response contains links to records, and this is going to be the AI port to be the prefix of these links, so to speak. So we click Next, ignoring the, res the REST resource parameters for now. And since we cloned the existing profile, we have all the possible applications here. So you see we start deleting most of them because we don't want to deploy all of them. We can deploy them later. So we de delete all but the ones we want to keep, like uh, DAF, call center, and delete all the rest here probably. Keep EI for EI object manager. Keep web tools since you want to give it a try. And once you've decided on the applications you keep, you can also create new applications using entirely different names here. But the important part is pick the object manager, otherwise you get an error message and say for each of the applications you must refer to a running object manager. These are running on the Siebel server right now. Once you click Submit, successfully save your profile. And now, again, we can go to Deployment, click Plus and deploy an application interface pointing to the application container of the machine which will host the AI. So in this case, it's the AI machine itself. Click Deploy, choose the profile and enter a node name which is visible in the deployment uh, diagram then and the description and we can click submit so this will deploy the AI we've noticed this is rather fast so after a few moments you should have a successfully deployed AI. So you have, might want to verify the tree view. Yes, AI is deployed. So now we have Siebel server running and AI deployed. So we can now log in to the Siebel applications exposed by the AI. So let's try that. Let's go to Siebel slash app slash call center slash ENU. So that's the new URL format for Siebel. So we might have gotten the port wrong here, or the protocol, HTTPS it is. And browser might say not secure because it's a self-signed certificate. But here we have the login page for call center, logging in. And here we go with Siebel call center IP 17. Very good, congratulations here. So let's just for the sake of demo, go to accounts, create a new account. So we see everything's fine and working properly. And while we're at it, try the new dashboard for workspaces, which is available 